Hey everyone, so in this video I want to talk about the free to use add on called Pro Builder. Pro Builder addresses one of the issues that I've always complained about Unity and that I don't think there were enough primitive shapes readily available. So normally if you go up to game object and you go to 3D object, you would see there's a cube, a sphere, a capsule, a collider, plane, a quad, and that was it. So basically what ProBuilder does is ProBuilder creates a new interface for you to make custom shapes. And again, as I mentioned, it's free to use. So you just have to go to the asset store, search for ProBuilder. And for some reason, at least when I searched, the search tool was a little picky and I had to put a space between Pro and Builder for it to find the add-on. But at the time of this recording is ProBuilder 2.x. And you just click on download because it's free to use. And then you get the separate window that asks which elements you want to import. You just import all. And then once that happens, you'll get the ProCore folder. And you'll get this new tools menu, which does not exist in the default version of Unity. So if you click on tools, you have Pro Builder. And then you can go to some of the individual tools, but for now, we're just going to go to the Pro Builder window. Now, there's just way too much to cover in one video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a brief overview, and then we'll focus on just one tool in this video. And then if you want, I'll make subsequent videos that focus on some of the other functionality. So in the Pro Builder window, you'll see that you have New Shape. That's the tool we're going to focus on. There's New Poly Shape. You also have other key tools such as Material Editor. And then up here, anyone who's used Blender or heard about Blender would probably be familiar with these. What these do is these let you interact with, the, uh, with certain aspects of a shape. So right now we just have this on Object Selection, but you can change it to Vertex Selection. So an object is made of a bunch of points. The Vertex Selection lets you select one or multiple of those points points and we'll do an example of that why you'd want to do that then next to that is the edge selector similar to a point you can select an edge so you're basically selecting um, similar to selecting multiple points but it is a little bit different and then the face selector again something that you'd recognize from blender and that is you can grab an entire facing so again similar to selecting multiple points but there are certain things that this lets you do when you select just a facing. OK, so that's the basic overview. Now we're just going to focus on new shape. And you'll see in a moment why I want to use a video just for this, because there are so many options. So if you click on new shape, you get a preview. And then what you'll see is you'll see shape selector. So you'll have several different shapes. And then once you've selected the shape, you can then change certain attributes. So this, it's the size, the X, Y, and Z, because it's just a cube. So say you wanted this to be 2X, or you wanted it to be 3Y, okay? So we're not going to create that shape. That one's pretty self-explanatory. So we're just going to cl click on the drop down, and we go to the next one. Stairs, something that many games involve. So, and this one's kind of interesting because it actually lets you do several different types of stairs. So, first of all, you have a step slider. So, as you can see, the size of the object as a whole is not changing, but since you're adding more stairs, then therefore each stair would be smaller. Build sides, so that refers to the facing. Why would you want to do that? Why would you want to remove the sides? Well, think of uh, a staircase that has a carpet, and the carpet isn't just the center of the stairs. You could use a texture, or again, if you're trying to do this simply, once you've made your stair, you then make a duplicate that's for the carpet. But there might be other reasons why you would do that as well. So we'll put that back. So curvature. Now, this makes a big difference. This is just a straight staircase like you might see in a house or something like that. But with curvature, as you can see, more like you're going around in like a castle or a, a tower. And then there's the stair width, stair height, 
inner radius. So is it a, does the tower have a narrow diameter? Does the tower, ha tower have a wider diameter? Because typically you'd expect this to go, be going around the perimeter. Um, also, when you do the curvature, you get this additional setting mirror. If you remove the curvature, mirror goes away. So we're not going to create that either. Like I said, we're just really doing a overview of this tool. Go to prism. Not much to say there, just like the cube, all you can really change is X, Y, and Z as far as size. I can think of a couple ways you'd use that. Maybe a simple roof for a house. Again, the, the idea is that these are meant to be primitives. These are meant to be simple shapes for you to quickly assemble an environment or to quickly put the pieces in place for you to test some kind of functionality. Cylinder. You can al already create a cylinder in the 3D object menu, but what this does is, if we zoom in a little bit, you can see that it has flat sides. Okay, so because you can do number of sides. So if you want it to be smoother, you certainly can do that. We'll go on to the next one. Plane. Again, this is something you can already do with the uh, game object, 3D object tool. With height, nothing really much to say there. Door. Now this one is kind of oddly named. It says door, but it's really not. It's the door frame. So for the door, you can look at total width. And again, in each case, the width is talking about one cube in width. So say you make this like six. Okay. Height, maybe you want it to be taller. So again, six. Total depth. Door height. Leg width, so these are the legs. And again, I'm not quite sure why they even call this door because it's more the door frame. But again, this is a common shape that you'd want to use for testing. Maybe trying to create a passageway or something. Or maybe you just want a door frame. Pipe. So this is one of the 3D shapes I wish they had in the default builder, but you have it now. And that is just as you have cylinder, you now have pipe. So it's a hollow cylinder. And just like the cylinder, you can make it squarish. So you can make the sides flat or you can add more sides. As you see, if you make the sides really, if you use a very small number, you effectively change the shape. Now you almost have like a chimney. Let's go to cone. So again, the main thing that you can do here is change the sides. So, And if it seems like that I keep losing the focus here, it seems that the pop-up causes me to lose the focus because when I select the field, I briefly lose the cursor and I have to select it again. So not sure if that's because of the pop-up window or what, but I do seem to keep losing the focus. So by changing the amount of sides, you can have, say, a tetrahedron or a pyramid or just increase it to whatever amount of sides you want. Sprite, I gotta be honest, not quite sure what this is used for, but I'll try to find out and get some more information to you guys. It almost like it's a piece of a plane, which would be kind of redundant, but again, I'll, I'll see if I can get more information for another video. Arch, here's another really good one. So, this one gives us a few options that the other ones don't, because with this, we have 180 degrees. You can actually change that. So you can make this small. So maybe you just kind of want like a corner bend. You don't want a full 180. 
So you can change the arch degrees. So 90. Or you increase it to say 270. And again, I keep losing the focus. Sorry about that. I'm not quite sure why it's doing that. End caps, that's this right here. So if you get rid of that, it basically makes it look more hollow. But the inside looks like a plane as well. So you probably wouldn't want to do that. But you could. I've been kind of glossing over these, but some of them I think are self-explanatory. Radius, so from the center point out to the edge. What's the thickness? Things like that. And also number of sides like some of the other ones so you can make it smoother. And we're getting down to the bottom here. This one I'm not going to really cover either. The main thing that you can do is uh, add more sides. There may be a reason why you would use this. I'd probably just use a regular orb if I'm going to do that. But maybe there's a stylistic reason why you want to. Taurus. So Taurus can actually be used for several different reasons. By its default, it kind of looks like a donut or a bagel or something like that. But you can actually make this thinner. So you can increase the uh, radius. And so what happens is it makes it thinner and so it looks, makes it look more like a ring. But there's even more than that. So let's go through this. So rows. So you can actually make this more angular. Almost looks like a, a primitive UFO or something. Okay. Columns, same thing. Making it uh, higher fidelity. Define inner outer radius. So outer radius. Okay, you make it larger, that's the outer radius, so that's the outside. The inner radius, like I said, making this thinner or thicker. So increasing the radius, so now you've turned it like into a ring. Whether it's something that needs to be, uh, f if you're flying through it, or maybe it's a ring and it's spinning and you need to collect it. Now this one's kind of interesting, kind of like the arch you can change the circumference. So maybe you don't want a complete ring. Maybe you want like, like an earring and so it's not totally connecting. Or maybe you want like a bracelet and you want that gap there for some reason. Now let me increase the thickness again. There we go. Okay, so the reason why I want to do that is because it makes it, it's going to be more obvious when I change the vertical circumference. So right now it's 360, so it's a full circle. But if I do this, you can see there's now a break in it. So again, there might be a stylistic reason why you want to do that. Maybe you only want this to be half like that. And then there's just custom at the end. So I think that's it for this video. So like I said, I just wanted to review the options of the new shape tool. There's just way too much in Pro Builder to cover in one video. In the next video, I will probably cover the new poly shape. In that one, you actually draw out the object, and then you would be more likely to use these tools. You could use these tools with the individual shapes that we just looked at. But like I said, I really want to get that into a separate video so as not to overwhelm you. Because, uh, again, if you're just doing prototyping, if you're just doing proof of concept, you might just want those simple shapes. But at least you have a larger range of simple shapes now. So that should about do it. I hope this has been helpful. If you want to see more, just leave a like and a comment as far as what you'd like to see.